So, hi everyone. Uh, this is my first presentation in Codebean. Uh, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we have been using uh, Ash. My name is Srikant, and uh, we have been using Elixir for about 10 years. And uh, recently, we stumbled upon Ash. And uh, this is a brief rundown of how we have used Ash and how you can use Ash, if ever you want to. So, uh, as you can see, the pun there, use Ash. It has a macro. So Ash is <laughs> so uh, so. What is Ash? Ash is a framework uh, which provides you a declarative API for developing Phoenix applications. So dare I say it's a Phoenix on steroids? <laughs> At least it worked. It was for us. So if you think about a normal application, what you would need, so you need some sort of database, authentication, authorization, some UI, and maybe some multi-tenancy, and maybe some REST API if there is a need for that, or maybe GraphQL, based on your need. So right now, for uh, there are like uh, multiple paths uh, that you take for doing multi-tenancy and authorizations. You use bringing uh, packages like Bodyguard, Let Me, or something. But what if there is a unified way? There is a better way. There is a rapid way. So again, Ash, a consistent way, I would say. So if you think about it, and if you start any project, so you start here. OK, I shamelessly copied this slide from Chris McCord. <laughs> uh, so you're here when you start your project. And with some mixed gen tasks, you come here. And with some extra plumbing, uh, you come here. Uh, but what if I say that you can come here directly? So would it be fun? So the rest of the stuff, the meat stuff of any uh, project is actually doing the actual business logic, but not the plumbing part. So the whole idea of this presentation is to get your basic plumbing out of your way so that you can uh, focus on your actual business logic. So again, a pun. Mix your sauce and deploy your sauce. <laughs> So uh, how does Ash look like? So it's pretty much similar to Phoenix, if you think about it in some way. So you have a domain. It's kind of a bounded context that you have. And then it has a bunch of resources associated to, with domain. So what you can do and how it is similar to Phoenix, let's go through that in a bit. So if you recap how a Phoenix schema would look like. So you have a schema block where you define some fields and you associate some sort of a, a type for that. And then again, you validate uh, everything which goes into the database or schema list You via the chain set. So you cast it and you validate it. So how does this look in the context of Ash? So Ash has also something similar. Instead of a schema block, you have something attributes something, a block called attributes, where you say that, OK, this particular attribute is of type this. And it goes a, a bit step beyond. It, you can also redact some information if you want. You can also uh, specify the validations here. So you can specify the validations and defaults. It's like a one place where you talk, uh, focus everything about this particular attribute, which is kind of a nice way. So instead of having two ways, but it doesn't give you that much benefit at this point. But Again, so uh, talking about, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> so, so the relationships. So if you want to, uh, what do you say, associate uh, different relationships, the way you do is uh, you write a relationship block, a delegated block, which is uh, uh, only specific to relationships. It, it, again, it is like kind of similar to Phoenix, uh, where you have one to many, one to one, has many, and many to many. It's pretty similar, pretty close. And then, once you have uh, you have written your attributes, so what you're supposed to do? So the next step is you write your actions. So you have Ash uh, gives you a specific definition, uh, specific blocks that you are supposed to write for create, update, and read. There are defaults defined, but you can extend it. I would say you can extend how the create works. You can extend how the read works, or update works, or delete works. And uh, if you don't like so uh, how Ash treats you, treats your actions, 
then you can, uh, well, so there are these kind of uh, uh, lifecycle hooks that it gives you, like uh, before and update, uh, before and after li lifecycle hooks that you can hook into and fall back to Ecto if you want to and make those queries. It doesn't stop you from that, which is kind of nice in my, my opinion. And then Ash provides you a lot of, uh, what do you say, uh, the query module is quite powerful. It's a talk in itself. Uh, if you have been to the DX, uh, what is a presentation earlier? <laughs> so uh, he was telling about a declarative way to write your uh, schema, what is it, uh, query calls or assort calls, and et cetera, et cetera. In Ash, it kind of gives you, I would say, it gives you the, uh, what is it, declarative way to do your calculations. You can do your calculations in a calculation block and load it as part of your uh, query. It's quite powerful. So. And uh, coming to the extensions. So you have your attributes, and now you want to extend it. So you want, if you want to persist uh, your uh, resource, there is Ash Postgres, which is an extension for your resource. And if you want a REST API, again, it's again, another extension. And there is an Ash Authentication and Ash Phoenix. I especially like the Ash Phoenix part, which gives you a nice uh, uh, APIs for dealing with the nested uh, what's it, forms. It's Pretty nice compared to the traditional, what is it, the vanilla Phoenix. On top of that, as gives you uh, this kind of uh, a guardrails, uh, like if you're making any mistakes, like if you're making any mistakes in relationships, or if you're missing any attributes, uh, it kind of tells you, okay, right, right at the point, like uh, you have made a mistake, please go correct it, which is kind of nice. I can focus on what I'm writing rather than what I'm making mistakes on. So if we go now. So the way that now I have written my attributes uh, for my resource, now I want to make it persistent. How would I do that? Again, the whole theme of Ash is blocks. So you, you write a block saying that, okay, uh, uh, you have a Postgres block which takes a table and a repo, and in here, I want to say you say that the data layer is Ash Postgres. There are two other, uh, if I remember right, there is an Ets and Mnish, uh, what do you say, uh, data layers. I think the, my preferred uh, choice is Postgres. And coming to the tenancy, I don't know what is, so the tenancy is again quite easy. So again, it's a block. So you have a multi-tenancy block where you specify the kind of strategy that you want. So there are two kind of strategies which are supported. One is a schema based for the Postgres and one is the attribute based which kind of works for all data, data layers if I remember right. And then coming to the policies. Oops. So I want to enforce this kind of authorization rules. How do I do that? It's again at the same place. So I say that uh, I need an authorizer, and uh, which is an Ash policy authorizer. And again, there is a block. So as you see that uh, whatever you do, it's uh, say what kind of additions you do, you are doing it at one place. That is your resource and not at different places. So when you look at your resource, it gives you a complete overview of what it is doing and what it's capable of and what kind of a role-based authentication what say you can enforce and things like that. Coming to the policies, uh, I have a demo like uh, where I would show that uh, it's a for actor-based, role-based authorization, where an only an admin resource can do some things, but not the, I would say, normal resource, it's users. Right? And let's say that I want to have a JSON API. So I would write a block. Now, I would say there are two ways to do this. So one is like you can specify your routes in the resource, and uh, the other way is to define your routes on the domain. The choice is yours. I think the preferred recommend way is to add your routes to the domain. And then I should tell uh, that I would say I'm, this particular resource now activates the JSON API. So that's about it. Now you have REST API. Quite easy, I would say. So coming to the next part, the igniter. So Zach Daniel has, uh, uh, has released this project and the brief definition of this project is uh, it does a lot of uh, code mods and uh, or the code patching. I have chosen the code uh, generation at this point to uh, generate the UI from the uh, what is it, resource definitions that I have done. So what, are, what were my steps? What did I do? 
So in order to generate the UI, you need to, you need to know what are the resources that you have for a given domain. And once you have that, you extract the attributes from that. And once you have the attributes, you need to know what kind of attributes they are. Once you figure that out, you should be able to or what is it, render the form fields for that. Once you have the form fields, I would render the live views with the tables. I have borrowed the uh, open source. Uh, there is one uh, package called Ash Table, which was quite uh, interesting. So I have used that in, in this particular UI generation. So there were like a couple of challenges. So the enumeration type uh, is a bit more tricky. Uh, it's like uh, in the en enum type, you have the atoms, but the form doesn't understand atoms. So you need to have some sort of a serialization, deserialization. Uh, to make the form understand that, okay, you are actually dealing with an atom, which is a string, and which is a string, which is an atom. So how do you do that? And the embedded types and the array types. So is it actually possible to generate the entire UI based on only pure resource or a definition? Ash gives you, uh, what I say, the APIs. Because we have written all the resource definitions in Ash, Ash has this meta information that you can extract. So you can poke and I would say get all the information that you want. Seems that it is possible to actually do that. Let's, let's see. I hope it works. Right. So, okay. This is small. Right. So. All right, so here I'm passing, uh, okay, I can, you cannot see. <laughs> How do I do this? Okay. Here I have uh, created this uh, ignited task, uh, which takes the domain as an input. So the parameter of the domain task is the uh, sorry, uh, the parameter of the ignited task is the domain. And based on this domain, so what does the domain has? If you look at the domain, so this is uh, the vanilla uh, Phoenix uh, test application, which is even shown on the Ash uh, website. So this particular domain uh, support or has a REST API for the tickets, and it has a couple of tick uh, what's it, resources associated with it. And if you look at the ticket, so it has, uh, what is it? It has a couple of bunch of attributes that have that we have gone through, and an enumeration type. So the, the enumeration type is uh, looks like this. So it supports open and closed. Very fancy, nothing fancy. So now if I if I do this, it should generate me uh, what is it? A table, and also the corresponding form for that. It will also take into account the multi-tenancy uh, that you have uh, fed in, and also the, yeah, the multi-tenancy part is also fed in. So I have made few assumptions here. The scope, uh, the path is kind of uh, hard-coded, but we can pass it as a parameter, but let's see. Come on, come on. <laughs> okay. So it has gone through the uh, domain and it has I would say extracted the resources for that and then it has uh, understood what the attributes are and then it has uh, generated the entire UI for us. So if I say yes, and then it will propose me, uh, what I say, the paths that I need to add to the router. Okay, uh, I have already added that. <laughs> so if you look at the chain set, Oh, sorry, the git, so it has generated these uh, what is it, uh, files for us, and these files were modified. Let's try to see how it actually works. So I have two different kind of users. One is a normal user, and one is an admin user. Very intuitive, unintuitive. So. Right? So, okay. Fall back. So normal user is there, very engineering UI. Uh, what is it? You have, it's saying that uh, 
what is the user. So th this particular project is using Ash authentication, the vanilla one. Nothing has changed. It's quite simple. And then if I go to the settings page, again in engineering UI, so it says that I the role is a member. I'm a, my role type is member. And uh, the API authentication, API token for that particular user who is belong to this particular organization and the tickets and representatives for that. If you go there, it creates a table for me. It's, this table is completely generated from the uh, attribute definitions that we have defined in the resource. And then we can create one form. Right. So now we are able to do it. So, and then are we able to even do it uh, from the REST API? Let's see. Okay. With, please let me know if you get not able to see. So here we are able to get all the tickets and we can basically perform all the, uh, what is it, uh, CRUD operations that we want to. Let's try to delete uh, the ticket that we want to. And it has been forbidden because the policy says that only an actor who is an admin is able to delete it, but not a normal actor. And if we try to delete it as an admin, okay. Demo effect. I do it. Yeah. All right. Now oh, I try to delete. Okay. But it should be working. I'm not able to see, understand why it's not working. Yeah. And uh, then, so this entire thing is a uh, should be, a, what is, I'm calling it as a starter kit. At some point, what is it? They should be only uh, mixed generated tasks that you should uh, use to generate the entire Ash setup. Uh, Zach Daniel is already on the way that uh, he, uh, he's created a bunch of ignited tasks that you can use it. I will create an additional task to you to you uh, to generate the UI as well. So, and the pros and cons. The pros are. Uh, what is it? Uh, once you write your resource definitions, the everything else is for free. So it's almost free. So the REST API part, the policies part. And then also it gives you some sort of a convention uh, that you write your code with. It kind of gives you some sort of a u uniformity in your code. And the cons, you have to read a lot of documentation. So uh, the, the documentation is improving uh, a bit every day, but uh, what is it? Still, you have to uh, read through a lot of documentation. For the things that I don't find on the Ash uh, documentation, I always go back to the tests in the uh, what is it, respective repo to find out how it has been used. The, uh, Zach Daniel has extensive tests for everything that he has done. So if you don't know how to use it, I think uh, what is it, the first point, at least for me, would be to go to the test and see how the tests are written, and then I can Im imitate the same in my source to get my things done. Yeah, that's me. <laughs>